ethical behaviors of leaders, employees, and other stakeholders are important in the success of an organization. But how does work ethics affect the organization? What ethical behaviors should leaders and employees possess and what makes them ethical or unethical? How would they effectively apply the code of ethics in the organization? How do leaders or administrators lead ethically? And how would they manage ethical lapses and social irresponsibility? These are the questions that usually pop out to our minds when dealing with ethics in the organization. So, let us tackle all these things here in this discussion. When we say ethical behavior, it is the application of moral principles, standards, and values regarding proper conduct in the workplace or organization. This means that our ethical behavior in the organization is reflected on what we say, what we do, and how we react to situations. There are three main factors that influence one's ethical behavior. First is the person himself or herself. There are many individual factors that affect our behavior at work, such as our knowledge, values, personal goals, personal beliefs, and even our own philosophies. It's because what we believe to be right will become our behavior. Another individual factor is our own emotions. For instance, if we are going through tough situations or when we are mad, then we tend to show undesirable behavior. On the other hand, if we are happy or satisfied, then we probably show desirable behaviors. This is because our emotions are anchored and are reflected in our behaviors. The second factor affecting ethical behavior is the organization itself. We all know that workplace ethics is caught more than it is taught. That is, the employees and other members of the organization learn their standards and values from observing what others do, not what they say, and that work values are instilled through good leadership. For example, if the principal comes to school late, then the teachers would also be late. The same is true in classroom setting. If the teacher usually comes late, then the students would also do the same because they would think that it is acceptable to be late even if it's not. That's why leaders and we teachers should always set good examples and be an epitome of desirable behaviors so that other people, especially the students, will also demonstrate ethical behaviors. And the third factor is the environment. We are all aware that the environment plays a significant role in the development of our ethical behavior by means of interacting with other people such as our family, friends, relatives, acquaintances, and significant others. So here are the ethical behaviors that are usually observed in an organization. First is being punctual. We all know that attendance and punctuality play a huge role in increasing organizational success. Being early at work shows our professionalism and discipline as leaders and teachers. Well, I can just remember what our principal usually says. Early is on time, on time is late, and late is unacceptable. That's why in the organization where I am working in, punctuality must always be observed, and that's a mandate. Second is staying productive. But how can we be productive in an organization? Well, we can be productive at work by means of prioritizing what are needed to be done or to be accomplished because setting our priorities implies that we will be more decisive and that we will procrastinate less. It also implies our efficiency at work. Another is being accountable with your actions. 
in the organization, we have the freedom to do what we think is right. But this freedom is always coupled with accountability. Sometimes we make mistakes, but we should never point fingers at others. Do not blame anyone of our failures or mistakes, but rather, we have to admit it and be accountable. Another is taking initiative. It is our practice in the organization that if someone needs help about something and if we are knowledgeable about it, then we take initiative to help them without being asked nor told. This is actually a good work ethics since it's about sharing each other's expertise which also develops friendship and teamwork in the organization. Staying optimistic is also one of the best practiced ethical behaviors. That is, in the organization, it is expected that there are numerous works to be done and tasks to be accomplished. However, no matter how exhausting it is, we should never complain nor make excuses. We should always stay optimistic and be motivated to work. Moreover, having emotional control is also a must in an organization. For instance, if the employees break an organizational rule, how would the leader handle it? How would it be addressed? Will he or she get mad and scold them right away? Or will the leader stay calm and address it ethically? Of course, as per observation, a great leader has emotional stability, especially in tough situations and in handling infractions to organizational policies. Because after all, it is through emotional control that a leader makes sound decisions and accurate solutions. In the same manner, if you are a classroom teacher and your student commits a school violation, do not immediately scold him or her and never say swear words that you might regret later, but rather control your emotions, understand the situation, and solve it nicely. That's emotional control. In addition, having unity or teamwork is also one of the ethical behaviors in the organization. An organization that has teamwork and collaboration promotes an atmosphere that fosters friendship and loyalty. Also, if there is teamwork, employees become more efficient and productive because it allows the work to be shared, reducing the pressure on individuals and ensure tasks are completed on time. Being fair in an organization is also an ethical act. Actually, when employees experience or perceive injustice or lack of fairness at work, it lowers their morale, trust, productivity, and work engagement. So how do leaders promote fairness at work? As observed, Leaders prevent injustice in the organization by means of treating all employees with dignity and respect, giving credit to whom it is due, making sure everyone's voice is heard, following natural justice principles and procedural fairness when dealing with complaints and grievances, and most importantly, by not playing favoritism to anyone. In the same manner, if we are the classroom teacher, we should also be fair among the students. We have to deal with all of them nicely, regardless of their differences. Another ethical behavior is being honest or transparent. But how can we establish honesty and transparency in the organization? Well, honesty is seen in different ways. By simply filling out your daily time record, or DTR correctly, is already a form of honesty. Another is by being transparent to school funds such as donations, expenses, and more so in the liquidation of the school MOOE. Because after all, honesty and transparency increase our credibility and builds other people's trust, not just in us, but also their trust in the entire organization. Communicating clearly and politely is also an ethical act. 
In the organization, communicating is more than just talking. It's about connecting with others. As per experience, good communication indeed mitigates conflict, increases employee engagement, promotes teamwork, and creates better relationship among the members of the organization. In line with this, giving constructive feedback is one way to communicate things properly. Sometimes, there are people who give feedbacks frankly, but little did they know that they are already hurting the feelings of others. So, in an organization, administrators and teachers should give constructive feedbacks and not destructive ones. So, as a classroom teacher, I usually give feedbacks constructively because whatever a teacher says has a great impact to every student. It could build or unbuild anyone. And that feedbacks should be something to ponder on and for them to become better. After all, it's not about what you say. It's about how you say it. So even if the feedback is negative, as long as it is communicated nicely, then it would still be taken positively. And of course, the best practice ethical behavior in the organization is respect. Whether you are a school head, a teacher, or whatever position or role you may have, it is important to foster respect because it is through this value that we can build a healthy work environment and can promote a positive culture at work. On the other hand, these are the commonly observed unethical behavior in the organization that must be avoided. Well, in an organization, making decisions for your own personal gain is indeed unethical because it implies selfishness. So, a leader or administrator needs to be altruistic and should involve his or her subordinates in the decision-making process. He or she must not only make decisions for the sake of himself or herself, but rather a leader or even a classroom teacher needs to listen to others' suggestions and decide not just for himself or herself alone, but more so for the betterment of the entire organization. Moreover, lack of communication should also be avoided because as per observation and experience, ineffective communication could create misunderstandings, conflict, dissemination of misinformation, mistrust, and worst of all, it could lead to organizational failure. Another unethical behavior is ignoring procedures or organizational protocols. I observed that in some instances in the organization, some teachers do not follow certain procedures or protocols. For instance, if there are issues in the organization, it should be solved within the organization through the school head and not to immediately report it to the higher ups nor to the division office. Aside from this, being unpunctual is also one of the most often committed unethical behaviors in the organization, which makes the employees less efficient, less effective, and less productive. So this misbehavior must be avoided so that others, especially the students, would not imitate. Further, gossiping is also very rampant in any organization. While it is normal to have pep talks with your colleagues, if you talk negatively about others and tell unproven things behind their backs, then that's already alarming. This unethical behavior of spreading rumors could certainly hurt someone's feelings, damages someone's morale and reputation, destroys productivity, trust, and everyone's emotional health. That's why this unethical behavior should be avoided because an organization does not have any room for toxicity. So to sum it up, if leaders, employees, and other stakeholders 
manifest ethical behaviors and avoid unethical ones, then there would be a desirable and peaceful work environment, good organization morale, harmonious relationship among colleagues, and increased employee performance. It also leads to job satisfaction, and more importantly, there would be a successful and reputable organization. Code of Ethics protects the health, safety, and general welfare of students and educators. It outlines objective standards of conduct for professional educators and clearly defines actions of an unethical nature for which disciplinary sanctions are justified. And as we all know, Code of Ethics plays a vital role not only for the teachers but also to the whole organization. The Code of Ethics serves as a guide for teachers for them to exhibit proper behavior to the learning community at all times. Teachers must, must observe and practice these set of ethical and moral principles, stand, principles, standards, and values. We have here the Quality Code of Conduct, where in Code of Ethics, prevent legal and regulatory violations. Why prevent legal and regulatory violations? Because when viola violations do harm, a code can help to detect them and mitigate their effects. And it's mentioned, it is also mentioned in the Code of Ethics that there are disciplinary actions for those who will violate. Next, to encourage greater lo loyalty and retention. When stakeholders learn about experience in the practice of an organization's high standards of conduct, then stakeholders are more likely to show their appreciation. To also build stronger relationships, and through that, it strengthens trust and respect of other stakeholders. And through this, it also builds a stronger reputation for integrity. Of course, the stakeholders will respect the school and the teachers based on how they apply the code of ethics. How a code works? First, it articulates leadership's expectations. Second, establishes leadership's commitment. Third, provides staff with a roadmap and tools for their daily work. Fourth, provides staff with comfort and confidence. And lastly, it encourages staff to serve the organization's aspirations. First, it articulates leadership's expectations because it's simply uh, establishing these expectations regarding what leadership expects is worthwhile. It provides clarity and transpar transparency so that staff does not have to guess at leadership's expectations. It establishes leadership's commitment. Much has been addressed regarding the importance of tone at the top regarding these expectations of responsible conduct. This can rise in importance. Third, provide staff with a roadmap and tools for their daily work. With clarity regarding leadership's expectations that an employee can easily and regularly reference, staff can act with consistency. Further, employees can turn to the code for guidance and questions of concerns. It is especially important to help employees to make good decisions when they face ambiguous situations or other issues that the code does not directly address. Fourth, provides staff with comfort and confidence. A code can provide staff with comfort that the company will support them when they act according to the code and confidence that decisions they make when they are in line with the code. Lastly, it encourages staff to serve the company's aspirations. A good code can encourage employees to strive to achieve with the company's mission, vision, and values in a constructive way. We can say that the code of ethics is effective 
if the following is being built. The honesty, trustworthiness, loyalty, caring, respect, accountability, confidentiality, integrity, objectivity, fidelity, and lastly, the veracity. We have here the best practices to make the code of ethics effective. First is root the code in core values such as trust and integrity. We all know that the code of ethics is rooted from the core values. Next, give a copy to all staff. This will remind the teachers on how they must act. If they have the copy, they will review and they will be reminded. Next, to provide a way to report breaches in a confidential manner. A leader or a school head must make a way that all issues violations concerning the teachers must be done and discussed privately. Include ethical issues in corporate training and programs. Training programs. Why we need to include this? For them not to forget the code of ethics, to clear all issues that bind the teacher that binds the teachers. This will inculcate to them the possible out outcome of their own actions. Set up a board committee to monitor the effectiveness of the code. Report on the code's use in the annual report. Make an individual responsible for code implement implementation. This will help not only the school and teachers, but it will also help build trust and respect from stakeholders. Review the code every inset. This is the same with giving a copy to the teachers. And through reviewing, they will be reminded. Next, make sure senior staff walk the talk. Why senior staff? because the senior staff will put those words into actions. They will be the model, and they will guide the teachers. So ethical leadership is a leadership that is directed by respect for ethical beliefs and values for the dignity and rights of others. It is related to concepts such as trust, honesty, consideration, charisma, and fairness. Ethical leadership is leadership centered around appropriate conduct through respect for ethics and values, as well as the rights and dignity of others. The concepts of honesty, integrity, trust, and fairness are all critical to ethical leadership. Ethical leadership in education is driven by respect for values and an unfaltering belief in the dignity and rights of others. Ethical leaders build school cultures governed, fair, clearly articulated expectations rather than cultures driven by personalities or politics. Based from the code of conduct or code of ethical conduct, for school leaders, states education leaders must be committed by helping every student succeed by acting with integrity, fairness, and in ethical manner. It is making professional and personal decisions using moral principles boiled down to the simple phrase, do the right thing. Ethical leadership is as leadership demonstrating and promoting normatively appropriate conduct through personal actions and interpersonal relations. When you boil it down, this really means that ethical leadership is defined as putting people into management and leadership positions so will promote and be an example of appropriate ethical conduct in their actions and relationships in the workplace. Ethical leadership is about walking the walk as much as it is about talking the talk. 
Ethical leaders have high expectations for their employees and they hold themselves to the same standards. Leaders also expect other members to the team to lead by example. So they walk the talk. Ethical leaders act with integrity, they practice what they preach and their values, words and deeds are aligned and visible to everyone. If they would not hold themselves to the same standards, they present to others, their credibility and reputation would suffer. Leading by example is a choice by consciousness and requires daily focus but face up like anything else. Leads by example, ethical leaders should have the same expectations for themselves as for those that work for them. Ethical leaders help their employees with their daily tasks. So, they have an in-depth understanding of what the other workers do and the challenges that can come with their work. These leaders are then able to guide employees as they do their daily tasks. Ethical leaders also show how to be ethical and moral in their work. Which is a crucial example to the other employees. When employees see that the leaders are constantly making decisions with integrity and honesty in mind, they are also willing to make those strict ethical considerations in their work. The ethical leader has high expectations for themselves and others. They demonstrate unwavering commitment to their ideals by not just talking the talk, but walking the walk. Leaders also expect others to lead by example. Ethical leadership is an important leadership skill that can help in all aspects of, of, of our career. When a leader and their company consistently do the right thing, employees will be aware of the foundations of their leadership. Ethical Leadership Principles Ethical leadership has six principles which serve as a guide for leaders in order to lead an organization successfully that can be presented through an acronym FATHER. The first principle is F. Fairness. The principle of fairness is core to the way we humans interact and expect to be treated fairly and strive to treat others fairly. As a leader, you should always treat your team, tribe, or followers fairly. Showing favoritism or treating people differently in the same situation can breed contempt among your people. Fairness is also related to disciplining people if they have behaved inappropriately. You need to avoid an equal discipline for the same issue across multiple employees. For instance, in an organization, employee A and employee B have conflicting ideas in a certain project. As a leader, fairness is seen when both employees are given equal opportunity for their ideas to be heard or considered. A. Accountability Being accountable for bad decisions or mistakes shows your moral fiber. We all make mistakes, but also many of us will not admit our mistakes and move on. It is a human nature to blame others, blame situations, or even blame the gods. But accepting accountability shows your strong well-rounded leader with a character that people will respect and follow. As a leader, we are always involved in a lot of decision-making. Part of it 
is accepting whatever is the consequences of our decision. T. Trust. Great relationship, relationships and great teams are built on trust. If you cannot completely trust your partner, your relationship will eventually fail. If you cannot trust your team's integrity, your team will ultimately fail and tears itself apart. Your team, your family, and your friendship rely on trust to grow and develop meaning. All high-performing teams will have a strong foundation of trust. Just like when you are building on, or when we are building a house, we see to it that the foundation is strong enough to withstand any calamities. And as a leader, we consider trust as the greatest foundation of an organization to achieve greater heights. H. Honesty. Being able to discuss openly and honestly important issues with those around you is a key to integrity of our relationships. Honesty feeds into trust directly. If you cannot be honest with someone, it means you cannot trust them to hear the truth or at least your version of truth. Situations that would shake a team are inevitable. It is always bound to happen. And during these times, constant communication, honest feedback, and trust is the key for cohesion, collaboration, and teamwork. E. Equality. The principle of equality is core to our global human survival and happiness. There are so many inequities in the world, based largely on the past, that people love to discriminate against others for so many reasons, be it color, faith, gender, sexuality, height, weight, or even hair color. If you practice discrimination and equality, you are not a well-rounded person, either intellectually or morally. Another quality of being a leader is being open to diversity, managing a team that comes from different minorities with different opinions, which was nurtured by their respective cultures. And being a leader who sees his, her subordinates equally will not consider these differences as a problem or hindrance. Or respect. Respect has many meanings, but the core meaning of respect is to show regard for the wishes, feelings, and rights of others. You may not agree with other people's feelings or wishes, but you need to respect that they have those feelings. You need to be able to appreciate that someone is the way they are for a reason. A true understanding with humanity means you will learn to respect the differences, but you need the ability to consider why those differences exist. The general rule for respect is that one cannot demand respect, as respect is gain. As a leader, in order to gain respect, a leader must accept its other's dissimilarity or dissimilarities and insights. To end up, as a leader, it's not about doing the right things. It's about doing the right things the right way. In this last portion of our presentation, I'll be sharing to you important ways on how to manage ethical lapses and social irresponsibility in schools. Unfortunately, employee misconduct is common. Dissatisfied workers breach their company's codes of conduct all the time, whether by misusing company time, taking credit for others' work, or harassing their colleagues. Unhappy employees raise many ethical issues in the workplace. Despite the pervasiveness of such behavior, employee misconduct often goes unreported for a variety of reasons. 
Colleagues may feel threatened by their unethical co-workers or they may fear backlash. Still, others might simply choose to look the other way to avoid conflict. So what exactly can employers do to mitigate employee misconduct while alleviating fears of retaliation for those who witness it? While there is no simple answer, there are some methods of addressing ethical issues in the workplace. First, a method of addressing ethical issues or lapses in the workplace is through making ethical code of conduct or simply introducing policies governing the responsibilities of employees, including their corresponding administrative sanctions. In this way, employees or teaching and non-teaching staff of the school are guided as they dedicate themselves to work in the organization. In my experience as a teacher in the school that I am connected right now, they see to it that employees are oriented as to the policies of the school. Once you are hired, the Vice President for Administration will give you a teacher's handbook. The handbook consists of the vision, mission, objectives, and core values of the institution and the rules and regulations that teachers must follow. With this, we are being reminded with the ethical code of conduct or policies of the school. In line for students, we give them their own school handbook crafted by the school's prefect of discipline. Just like the handbook of teachers, this handbook consists of policies that they must follow in order not to incur any misconduct. The student's handbook also provides lists of misconduct with their corresponding contract or sanction. Second, school leaders must provide resources and education. Why is there a need to do this? When school leaders amend their codes of ethics, they may see pushback from employees who refuse to change. Often, this results from employees not understanding how to implement these changes. However, just because they may have a tough time adjusting to new practices does not mean they are completely incapable of doing so. Employers can effectively implement these programs by explaining the rationale behind them, including what are necessary to change, how they will improve employee relations, and how individual workers will benefit from it. When employees understand the importance of continuing education rather than simply going through required motions, they are more likely to fully comply. This second way of managing lapses in the workplace is being accomplished by our institution through the annual orientation and reorientation of the employees delivered by our Vice President for Administration. In this process, employees, both teaching and non-teaching staffs, are guided as to what are the rules of the school to be followed to avoid administrative cases. In the classroom, during the start of the school year, advisors must meet their respective advisory class and discuss the classroom rules and regulations to avoid conflict in the long run. I find this strategy effective if teachers will really implement such things in the classroom. Third is to implement a system for reporting unethical behavior. To eliminate or reduce the number of times that employees incurred unethical actions, those who witness that situation must report it to proper authorities in the school. But before doing it, that person who witnessed it or experienced that unethical action must provide evidence to validate the report. In the school that I am connected right now, we follow a scheme wherein we inform first the area head, then the area head will inform the assistant principal, then the assistant principal will inform the principal, and lastly, the principal will inform the vice president for administration on the reported case. 
After the principal informs the VP for administration, we need to wait days as the school will investigate the report and revisit the handbook for proper guidance. Later, the VP for administration will call the person who report it for an interview. In this interview, gathering of information is done. Then, the person that is involved in the unethical action will also undergo questioning process to weigh the laid evidences. After this, the Vice President for Administration and the Board of Trustees will have a talk with the issue and decide for administrative action to be undertaken. This is how we report an ethical actions acted upon by our co-teachers. What will the school do to those who reported that unethical dilemmas? All the employees may understand that they will not suffer suffer repercussions from blowing the whistle, they may still be hesitant to do it because of fear of alienating coming from the co-workers. To alleviate this issue, school leaders should set up a confidential system for reporting unethical violations. Similarly, school leaders should handle discipline confidentially to protect the privacy of those who need to confront. Most importantly, school leaders should never punish an entire team for the actions of one or two workers. How about in the school? How do advisors report wrongdoings to the proper authority? In the classroom, as an advisor, unethical issues committed by students are directly introduced to the Prefect of Discipline of the Senior High School Department. The POD is in charge in assessing the issues as the POD will weigh the grievances of the unethical issue. Initially, the POD will call for the parent or guardian of the student to inform them about the issue. After that, the POD will refer it to their principal as to what must be the action basing from the committed problem and identify what must be the punishment through the student handbook. The student, together with the parents, will then ask to revisit the school to inform them about the decision and may or may not receive a contract indicating that students will be suspended or removed from the list of students. And this is how we report unethical doings or actions of our students as an advisor or a teacher. Next is the need for school leaders to respond. Since schools implement confidential system such as Board of Trustees and Prefect of Discipline to investigate the issue, school leaders must respond from the reported unethical lapses of their employees be it a grave action or not. Because in this way, employees are reminded that school leaders are implementing the rules of the school properly and that they talk serious actions or they take serious actions to administrative cases. If school leaders will not respond from any unethical lapses, employees will be free and the image of the institution will be destroyed. For my part as a teacher, our school leaders are responding to different lapses in different ways following what are stated in the teacher's handbook. One unethical action that I observe is that my fellow teachers are always late in coming to school even though we are just mandated to report twice a week. Despite the reminders of our principal and area head, many of us are still having trouble reaching the school on or before 7.30 in the morning. Why do we have this arrangement despite of the pandemic? We have the so-called Executive Advisory Board or EAB. And during the EAB meeting in our school, we are required to go to school for two days from 7.30 to 5 o'clock in the afternoon and the rest of the weekdays are for work from home scheme. So what is the response of the school to those teachers who are coming to school late? During the annual evaluation meeting with the Vice President for Academics, teachers who incurred more than the allowed number of late were given stern warning from the administrators 
and those who receive two stern warning is forced to leave the institution. Being late can be a not serious issue, but all actions are based on the teacher's handbook that was handed to all the employees in the first day of our work. Last way is, as school leaders respond, response to all who commit unethical actions and irresponsibility must be consistent. Once school leaders implement a system of dealing with ethical issues in the workplace, everyone must adhere to the policy exactly as detailed. When employees sign the new policy, indicating their understanding and pledging their compliance, they agree to hold themselves to a higher standard and to face the consequences of not doing so. Employers must agree to hold themselves to this same standard. If either side compromises the agreement, the system will fail. Schools will never be completely free of misconduct. However, school leaders can implement policies to minimize the number of ethical issues in the workplace. By training those who are willing to learn and terminating those who are not, employers can make the workplace safer and more enjoyable for everyone. To end, we must remember that school leaders in most institutions commonly strive to encourage ethical practices not only to ensure moral conduct but also to gain whatever advantage there may be. Creating, distributing, and continually improving a company's code of ethics is one usual step school leaders can take to establish an ethical workplace. Moreover, as a part of our reflection, encouraging ethical conduct in the classroom is critical to successful teaching. Therefore, a teacher must dedicate adequate time to establish and reinforce those beliefs with his or her classes.